All right, your next performer, all the way from Los Angeles, make a lot of noise from super funny guy, Jason Van Class. Everybody, let's hear for Jason. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, first time uh, here in the state, and it feels good. I was raised in Northern California, where I'm an alpha male, and <laughs> yeah, very powerful there. Uh, my parents, the San Francisco liberals, like you might have heard about, uh, so almost everything I know about the Bible, I learned by reading the packaging of In-N-Out. That's where I got most of it. They put little Bible passages on their fast food, like John 3.16, and it worked. I looked it up. I looked up John 3.16, and John 3.16 is boring. It's not the hook. This is not the elevator pitch for all of Christianity, uh, which is weird to me because like, I'm not an expert, uh, but there are definitely better passages they could be using, like Proverbs 21.19, for instance. Feel free to open your Bibles and say it along with me. <laughs> Proverbs 21.19, better to live alone in the desert than with a nagging and quarrelsome woman. God said that. Uh, original men's rights activist in the sky. Part of the clouds. Write this down. And it's like, I'm not saying, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I agree with it. What I'm saying is, if you found that at the bottom of a basket of fries, you'd be like, I gotta read this book. Real page turner, it turns out. Story uh, in the Bible that I do like, it's in the New Testament. Uh, Jesus, he's in the desert. He's got his whole crew with him. Turtle, E, everybody's there. <laughs> whole gang's together. And they're hungry. They haven't eaten in a couple days. But they see a fig tree on the horizon. So they go and check it out. But figs aren't in season. And then Jesus said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit of you again. And his apostles heard him say it. Uh, the reason I like that part of the Bible is that Jesus was like, Guys, gather around. I don't have anything to say about abortion or homosexuality. But make sure you get this. Fuck figs. <laughs> Fuck figs forever. Uh, they did write it down. That's the reason the Bible twice. God hates figs. Put that on a milkshake. That's all I'm saying. I believe in God, but I only believe in two things about God. Everything else I'm agnostic on. Uh, first thing, I don't think God made us in his image. Seems like a weird thing to do, because we look weird. You know what I mean? God could have picked any of you. He could have been 29 feet tall with lasers for eyes. And if God made us in his image, it means God's 5'7 with psoriasis. It's not the kind of God I want to believe in. Uh, the second thing is, uh, I don't think God is a woman. Uh, growing up, you'd be surprised. San Francisco, that's like a, that's a normal belief. And it makes a lot of sense, because like God, God gave birth to the universe, God gave birth to us, that's something a woman would do. Uh, the thing is, right after giving birth to us, God disappeared forever? <laughs> God's a man. <laughs> that might be a man. Haven't seen God in a while, pretty sure he loves us. You know what I mean? He's coming back. He's coming. He's a guy. He's got a lot of stuff on his plate, you know? But he's kind of cares. <laughs> I was reading that book, The Game. I don't know if you guys are big book readers like I am. But if you haven't read the New York Times best-selling book, The Game, the thesis of the surprisingly long book, The Game, said if you're rude to women, it'll trick them into liking you. And I personally have no idea if the game works on women, but it sure as fuck works on cats. <laughs> Life-changing book for me. Life's 100% better, and I don't want to get political tonight, but cats are better than dogs. I have to say it, I have to be honest to myself. And if you have a cute dog, I do want to meet it after the show. But cats are better, and the reason why is what a cat can teach you. Because if you, you have a dog, like let's say you get a dog for your kid. Your kid's going to learn responsibility, which is important. You get a cat for your child. Your child's going to learn life's biggest lesson, which is that no matter how much you love something, it won't necessarily love you in return. <laughs> Think about how much time you can save your kid. That's years. Years. Cats are better. One thing I've read, uh, 
the game and uh, know so much about cats uh, is that uh, I'm asexual, uh, which is like being queer, but we don't get our own letter in the acronym because we don't do parades. Very rare. We like to be quiet. We don't get involved in group activities. Uh, and I will. I'll explain it. You don't need to get worried. But first, I want to ask if you're if you're sure you know what asexuality in humans is. Clap once. Yeah, five people. That's fine. We're very low profile. Uh, being asexual, that just means I'm not DTF. You know what I mean? Seems like a lot of work. Not that into it. Have a lot of free time as a result. Uh, and the coolest thing about it is that uh, just by telling you guys that I am asexual, I've become one of the most famous asexuals of all time. <laughs> I'm number four now. One percent of the population, yet I'm number four. Because again, we don't do parades. Uh, it seems just like a lot of work, you know what I mean? Uh, so I don't have any dating experience. Uh, really, uh, and I, I guess I have a question about dating. I'm trying to get to the bottom too. Oh, just like, how long are you allowed to date somebody before you have to tell them everything that's secretly wrong with you? <laughs> that's what I want to know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to come to a couple in the audience on this one. I think we pulled the audience earlier that the front row is not in a couple relationship. <laughs> Can I come to you two on this? Are you with either of these gentlemen? <laughs> Did either of you guys think you were with her? It's cool. That's fine. There's no wrong answers. I want to come to you two on this, even though you're not dating. Uh, how long are you allowed to date somebody before you have to tell them everything? The secret they're wrong with you. Never. A couple women shut out. Never. Great answer. This is your chance to match or raise. <laughs> You get a panic? No, I didn't tell them right away. Get it over with. I said there were no wrong answers. There are wrong answers. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get it right away. Huge mistake. Are you single? Are you single, sir? No? Wow, you got an all out the gate and you're in a relationship? I can't make it for you, man. That's not what I, I would I would wait like six years. <laughs> That's my plan. That's my advice to all of you tonight. Date somebody for six years and then just start slipping secrets into conversation. <laughs> Wait for them to jump in the shower and be like, Honey, I'm going out for a while. By the way, the last person I trusted really hurt me, so I'll probably never trust you, but I'll be back later if you want to watch Down and Abbey. <laughs> and if they're still there when you get home, it's, you're good. You're good for life now. It's meant to be. Right away. That's the answer. Uh, last year was a pretty tragic year. I think you know uh, what I'm talking about. And that's the end of the social network vine. <laughs> Ended last year. If you're here tonight and you were on mine, please clap once. Yeah, it's the asexual wild <laughs> social networks. All five of you. It was tragic for me because uh, I was huge on it. Huge on mine. Had like nine thousand mine followers, just like more than I have on other social networks. Uh, it's like probably sounds like a lot. It really just meant nine thousand people downloaded mine, followed me, and then never used mine again. <laughs> Uh, but like Twitter, which I care about, I'm like, I can't get any traction at all on Twitter. Last week I tweeted all caps, retweet this or I will kill myself. And they got zero retweets. And one fave. One fave. Uh, guys, uh, the last thing I want to say is, you know, I'm coming all the way from California. Uh, I feel so blessed I get to travel this country and be on stage. And my goal as a comedian is to break even and continue living in poverty. <laughs> so if you liked anything about my set tonight or you feel sorry for me, uh, I made zines, not a great business decision, but I made them and they're five bucks and you can talk to me after the show. I've been Jason Glass. good night. <laughs>